In this example, our goal is to build a membrane system containing a cholera toxin B, CTB, and gangliocide GM1 complex using PDB-ID 3CHB. Cholera toxin consists of five identical CTB subunits and a single A subunit. The CTB subunit is responsible for binding to gangliocide GM1 on the cell surface for endocytosis, and GM1 is responsible for catalytic activity inside the cell. Let's start by going to Membrane Builder. Type 3CHB and change the download source to RCSB, because the OMP database doesn't contain this structure. Then go to the next step. Because we have five CTB subunits and associated GM1 carbohydrates in the PDB file, we can go to the next step for PDB manipulation. In this step, we need to focus on the glycosylation glycan ligand options, as we need to add the ceramide tails, as well as any missing carbohydrates. As you can see, carbohydrate A and C are missing a beta-glucose at the reducing end. Each of the carbohydrates should also be linked to a ceramide. First click Edit on carbohydrate A. We have a new pop-up window, and we need to first add beta-glucose at the reducing end to the galactose with a beta-1,4 linkage. Then add a ceramide tail by clicking None and choosing CER180 to build a complete gangliocide GM1. Now we can click Next Step to update the sequence. Notice that carbohydrate A's glycan type has changed from ligand to glycolipid. Repeat the process for carbohydrate C. For carbohydrate B, D and E just add the ceramide 180 to build a complete gangliocide GM1. Once everything is done, click Next Step to orient the model in a bilayer. You should first confirm that the CTB GM1 complex model was built correctly by clicking View Structure. A PDB file from RCSB is not generally oriented with respect to the membrane bilayer, like our model so we first need to orient it. CharmGUI provides a few options, and we will use the option for aligning the first principal axis of our protein along the z-axis of the system. Because we have a pentameric CTB whose principal axis can be easily defined, it is good to use for this alignment. Since we have no idea where this aligned structure will be located with respect to a bilayer centered at z equals zero, we need to first click Next Step. Click the View Structure link of the oriented PDB to see how our model is oriented in a bilayer. Note that the two planes represent an approximate hydrophobic region of a bilayer from minus 12 angstroms to plus 12 angstroms along the z-axis, so they won't necessarily align with our actual membrane. Now we can see that our model is oriented incorrectly. This is because the longest axis is not the 5-fold axis of the CTB structure due to its shape. So, we should go back to the previous step and rotate it along the y-axis by negative 90 degrees because the principal axis will be aligned along the x-axis. Now the 5-fold axis is aligned along the z-axis, which is the membrane normal vector, but the protein is inside the membrane, although it should be above the membrane. So, we should go back to the previous page again and add an option to translate the molecule along the z-axis by 40 angstroms. This is an approximate guess obtained by trial and error. Assuming that this orientation is acceptable, we can now start to build the bilayer. For the first two options, we can just take the default values. The third is the most important option to determine the membrane dimension along the xy plane. The basic idea is to use the lipid area of each lipid to determine the xy dimension. So we need to know an approximate x and y length to use a lipid component ratio. In this example, we will build a simple bilayer using DMPC as the only lipid type. Let's first try 100 for the XY length, and type 1 and 1 for the upper and lower leaflet ratios in DMPC under PC lipids. Then show the system info. Membrane Builder notices that the system size we chose is not big enough for our complex model. So we can adjust the XY length to 150 and show the system info again. Now we can go to the next step to see if our XY membrane dimension is reasonable. 
Membrane Builder is packing pseudolipid spheres in the upper and lower leaflets. This should take about two to three minutes. In this step, it is very important to view the structure of step three packing.pdb. It is highly recommended to have at least four spheres, that is, lipid molecules, between the protein in the primary cell and those in the neighboring images. In our case, we seem to have too many lipids. Note that it is up to you to decide which system size is good after having at least four spheres between images, and this depends on your research topic and available resources. If necessary, you can go back to the previous step again to adjust the XY dimension. In this example, we'll go back again and adjust it to 120. Again, we check the step three packing structure and assume that this dimension is approximately correct for this example. Now, assuming that the default options for ions are reasonable, we can click next step to build a DMPC bilayer. The pseudospheres are replaced by real DMPC molecules in this step to avoid any bad contacts in the system. This is the most time-consuming step in Membrane Builder. In our example, it would take about 35 to 40 minutes. With bigger systems, you should expect even more time to finish this step, so you can use this bookmark link to check if your job is done later. When it finishes, click Next Step to build the water box and ions. It should take about two to three minutes for our system. Now we have all of the components for our CTB GM1 complex model using a DMPC bilayer, water box, and ions. So click Next Step to assemble them. It should take another three to four minutes. If you're interested in running your simulation using Gromax, you can select it. Otherwise, we don't need to change any other options, so we can click Next Step to finalize the system building and input generation. Since Membrane Builder generates all necessary restraint files and performs some minimization for non-charm programs, it will take another five to eight minutes. When it finishes, you can download your project directory. You should check the Step 5 assembly structure to make sure that it's reasonable. Then read the README file in the Gromax directory to run equilibration and production.